Kathy for bringing that up. Great. Thank you. All right. All right. So now, what answers, back to you. <laughs> yeah, what answers do we have in the chat? Um, we have all the way from six seconds, 10 seconds, one minute, 20 seconds, 15 seconds, 10 seconds. That looks That's like pretty good. That's pretty good. So the answer is 7.4 seconds, which I think God. is crazy, right? Because that's a, a very short amount of time. And I think when you look at your resume through that lens, the most important thing to focus on is that short attention spans or just a quick glance means that you need to clearly communicate who you are and what you bring to the table straight off the bat. It can't be hidden down in the text on the third page or, you know, this glorious residential project hidden deep into your portfolio. It needs to be the first thing that someone sees. If you really want to get that foot in the door, if it's not, you know, a friend introducing you to a manager that you went to school with, you know, it's like, you really need to look at the job application process through that lens of a decision maker so that you can work backwards from there and make sure that you're working up towards that when creating or revamping your CV. Um, the most common mistake that I see or we see in resumes is just a list of responsibilities, like essentially a copy paste of the job description as you received it when you started at a job or an internship. Um, and what I really hope you take away from this chat is to focus on value and accomplishments, not just a history. Um, so focusing on where you wanna go, what you wanna be doing, your goals and your, uh, your wins. So when it comes to, and this is like the slide I'll spend the most time on, I can, there's the um, image here on the right is sort of a generic resume and then some of our notes that are specific to how that layout is, but I'll also go through sort of my bullet points on the left-hand side. Um, and the first one is to have, it, have a hierarchy. Make the first thing on the page the most important thing, whether it's a summary about who you are as a designer. You know, I'm an interior designer. I have 10 years of experience in project management on X, Y, Z typologies. Um, or what it is that you're looking for, or what it is that you're most interested in. Um, I don't believe that the top of your resume is really a space for, um, which is different from this example resume here, for your education. I think that that should be something at the bottom. I think you should sort of leave, uh, unless, I guess, you just, just graduated and there might not be anything else that you have to highlight just yet. Um, and maybe you could highlight recent relevant coursework or your GPA or any awards that you won. Um, but generally speaking, for most people who have gotten a couple of years into their career, I think that that's something that you want to have lower down. Um, so have that hierarchy, have, make your strengths most obvious. Um, you want to sell your achievements at past and current positions um, instead of saying, you know, manage projects, manage residential projects, you could say, um, you know, that you managed, uh, I think there's a thing in the screen, um, that you managed um, five projects at one time with budgets of varying from one to $5 million. And you had uh, return, you know, return clients after being involved in those projects. I think that says a lot more about your accomplishments than just saying, you know, what your responsibility was. It's, it's more valuable to uh, state what you accomplished. You also want to, in that same vein, use numbers in your CV to quantify what you've been able to do. So uh, what are the percentage of return clients or what was the money saved by selecting different finishes or what uh, projects have you brought into the office or, um, you know, like I said, your GPA when you went to school or, you know, what your standing was out of other students or in your internship. The more you can use uh, factual evidence to booster the understanding of what you've been doing is, is obviously great. Um, and you can do that in 
other kind of soft skills as well, not necessarily just what you were doing day to day. You could talk about uh, creating a tool or a process that helps save time or automate certain details or create a better layout and how you put together construction documents. Maybe it's software specific, like, you know, you graduated using the most current version of Revit and you're totally at ease with software, like that's something that you really might overlook when you're graduating or coming out of school. That's a skill set that most people look to students for, right? And so being, you know, assured of your own skills um, and, and communicating that right off the bat. Sometimes maybe your skills are more focused on research or business development or um, something else. Just be honest with yourself and make it clear what you're good at and what you love doing. Um, next line is keep it clean, keep it simple. Um, with having a simplified layout is easier for the eye to scan and to sort of feed into that hierarchy and, and jump to the, you know, part that's most relevant for that uh, hiring person to review. Um, you want to showcase your style with your resume and your portfolio, but you want to keep it simple enough to be clearly legible and not distracting from the information. Um, so it is a fine line. I tend to gravitate towards like more minimalist um, CVs and portfolios because it's better to have someone curious to know more than just be like, oh my gosh, this is everything in the kitchen sink um, in like a a hundred page portfolio. I definitely think uh, less is more <laughs> in the sense of CVs and portfolios. Um, you want to make it easy to read, obviously easy to scan, and you want to check your spelling a million times over. This is something that I, I see at all levels of experience. It's, you know, no shame. It's hard to, um, to edit text, especially if you're creating a resume in um, InDesign or using a different sort of setup that's not doing like a Microsoft Word uh, spell check. You really want to check your spelling twice, have somebody else read it through, print it out, read it on paper, send it to a friend, whatever it takes, check, check again, check three times. Um, nothing worse than spelling architecture wrong right off the bat. You at least got to get that one. Um, and it's just an easy thing that makes it look really polished uh, rather than, you know, last minute. Um, you also want to show the correct order. So showing your professional experience in chronological order from most recent to least recent. It's quite confusing for someone to start reading who you are. And then they're like, oh, wait, they worked there in 2007. Like that was, oh my God, so many years ago. Um, <laughs> You want to really make sure that you're coming in and you have the most relevant role and what you've been doing as of recent right there at the top. Um, you also uh, want to just describe roles that pertain to the job you're applying for. I don't usually see in architecture and design as much of like outside industry roles on someone's CV, but I know that it does happen. And obviously it's, it's something that when you're just graduating, you want to show that you've had professional experience. So in that sense, like I would still encourage you to show that you've been working if you have been, um, <clears throat> but try to highlight maybe how design or architecture could be related to that job. If there's anything, if there's not, then maybe just talk about how you were a really consistent employee while going to school with that job or whatever it is that made it um, meaningful to include that, but not like take somebody down a different, you know, path, so to speak, um, because it distracts them from being able to decide quickly, like, is this person a fit or is it not? Showing that you've been a good, faithful employee for many years of, of, with an employer or that you've worked for, you know, firms of different sizes, um, or you had this really cool e internship, even if it was a month long, that's great. All that should be on there, but you just don't want to sort of take somebody away from what their laser focus is already. Um, and you also want to um, include your contact details and how to find you. I, I usually do at the bottom of the page because you 
probably by then convince them who you are. And if they want to get in touch with you, they can search for your email at the bottom of the page. Doesn't need to be at the top again with the hierarchy. And I want to mention that you should definitely clearly label your resume, the document itself or your portfolio with your complete name, the year and resume. It's something that like maybe we don't think about because we're on our computer and everything is saved as a billion different things. But if you're sending your resume into a firm um, or you're emailing it as an attachment, you just want to be super, super clear that wherever it goes, it's taking your contact details with it and it makes it so once it's downloaded, it can be easily searched on someone else's computer if they're trying to remember who you are. Um, really important and, and oftentimes overlooked. Uh, with Make it concise. I like to aim for one page of resume per 10 years of work. And I know that that may seem like a bit restrictive because we're used to really elaborating about what, you know, what we've accomplished. Um, but I think that it's a good practice because again, this isn't the interview. Like your resume is not the interview. The resume is an invitation, hopefully, to get the interview. So you want to pique somebody's interest, but you don't want to tell them your life story. And you can incorporate um, other, or you can sort of incorporate your experience into the other documents, whether it's your portfolio or a project list. Um, and then you can really dive into the, all of the things that you've accomplished. But in terms of your CV, I try to do one page per 10 years. Um, if you do have a project list or you have some recent awards or uh, you have creative samples or you have a, a published project on your firm's website that you worked on, I really think it's great to hyperlink those um, projects. When you hyperlink in a doc or um, even in InDesign or Canva, which I'll talk about, which I love, um, you can export as a PDF and those are all still unique clickable links. It's only when you export as an image, then there's only one, but you should definitely hyperlink as much as possible to send people to, you know, a page that has more information if they're that curious to know more. That way you also save time. You don't have to talk about like, what type of firm is it? What type of projects do they do? You just have the hyperlinked firm and then list your, list your accomplishments. Um, and if you have more than that to share, more than what's on a project list or, you know, that's where the portfolio comes in. And there's some great uh, resources with AWA plus D all about portfolio that are coming up and I'll show those at the end. Um, I also think it's important to utilize free templates. I think it's hard as designers to like <laughs> go for a template that someone else created that's like 10 years old in Microsoft Word. Um, but I don't want you to reinvent the wheel and sometimes it's better to be done than to be perfect. Um, and there's other places and platforms that have really great innovative templates. Um, my absolute all-time fave completely free online is canva.com. It's like canvas without an S canva, um, totally customizable, really easy, um, templates. And I was just going to pull up let's see as my computer is like no you cannot um <laughs> I was just gonna pull up the other window but it is not wanting to do that let's see where did they yeah, I've used canva before it's great and I mean it's very good you can just type in min minimalist uh resume and there's just so many different ways that you can um, customize it's actually really cool yeah. so let me just pull up canva to just show how quickly you can find something interesting it's already searching resumes and it's already giving you like the you know printed mm -hmm um thing and it's already giving me some suggested templates let's see what they got um and it's neat because you can share it and you can really quickly do a duplication so that you can tweak it for certain types of firms like maybe you've worked kind of half and half right single family residential and hospitality hmm. and you don't know whether you want to go down x road or y road 
you could create a hospitality resume and you could create a residential resume that sort of still brings in little pieces of both, um, but is really tailored. And that's going to be more eye-catching than just having this like everything resume. So one of the cool tools is that you can just quickly duplicate your page. So once you've worked on this and updated it, um, you can just do a quick duplicate. You can obviously delete it. You can make a second page. Um, And then what's neat is like, if you zoom in, you can just super quickly change a picture. You can change the font for all of your headlines. The um, formatting is really easy compared to Word to move things around as anybody who has battled a CV template on Word will tell you, yes. not fun. Um, and you can change colors, you can change shadows, everything is editable. You can even change these tiny little icons, you know, and you can fit in other ones. Maybe you don't want to have a, your, maybe you don't have a website, but you have a portfolio and then you can just put your issue portfolio linked all here. And like I said, you can just select it and, um, Uh, Well, maybe I need to select the actual text. Let's see. And then you can go, why is my screen all zoomed in? Um, Hyperlink like this. Oh, wow. You can just do a little um, link right there. You can, some of them already have these skills. It's just so easy breezy. And then you just download to a PDF, not a PNG. Um, and you select like your, just your first page done download, got yourself a resume. It's really that wow. easy. And what's great is that they also have, um, portfolio templates. So if you find like a nice, simple template that you like here, you could, um, find a template for your portfolio that is pretty similar in style. You can use the same fonts. You can use the same colors. So can't say enough great things about good old Canva. Um, and I think I'm going to, I'm going to insert this here because I know that we've got people on, on the, on the call that may be, you know, a few years out of school. And so your school portfolio is no longer pertinent. You have to create a portfolio for in like those, you know, I wouldn't have any idea how to go about putting together a portfolio. So using this website, they really are uh, really easy, and that would be um, a really good tool uh, to use. Okay. So totally. totally. Yeah. And if you do your student portfolio in here, you can come back to it in a couple of years and duplicate the same template if you like that or update it as you want and put in your professional work and or have somewhere in between where you're working on it, you know, at the end of the year each year, which we've talked about is a, a good practice so that you don't forget all of the great things that you've accomplished. Um, and then for CV examples, I just wanted to put myself on blast. I have this funny side by side. This was actually my resume back in 2017. I sent it in an email as a word document, which I do not advise because the formatting gets all weird. Um, it's a two and three line resume, which I don't approve of. And it's really text heavy. It's got a lot going on. I've got, of course, my, you know, now not best practices of having my contact details all at the top and my education. And then like so many skills that are really long and huge descriptions of the company I worked for and, you know, all of the things that I did. And it's just a lot, like it's too much, right? This is me now. This is my one page resume. It is um, maybe too short for some people, but I am not an architect or designer. It's kind of just focused on the most basic um, things. My bullet points are all one line, which is obviously as readable as it gets. Um, I try to quantify as much as I can what it is that I'm doing, whether it's, you know, working in a system with 190 plus, you know, contacts, uh, how much I was budgeting, what percentile was I scored in, um, how many events did I run, really trying to like hit it home with the true details and accomplishments of what I did. And then I can link some of the more interesting things that I've been working on as hyperlinks, cre- you know, creative samples. Um, 
And then again, my skills and abilities are like one liners, right? Not like these, <laughs> this little mini book about myself that I have here. Um, and I think that, you know, it also, these firms are all hyperlinked, which I did do back in, back in the day here in this resume, I guess, originally, um, I just think that that's a nice way so that if someone's curious about what that company is, they can just click through and see their website. That's why they have an about page. I don't need to sort of explain who they are for them. Um, and then the important part is the title. Like I call myself a creative leader and strategist. You can call yourself an architectural designer or a job captain or a project manager or director of design. Um, you kind of want to lead with uh, the title so that it also creates the mental tie-in to the person who's hiring of like, what job are you applying for? It's strange if you're a junior designer and you're applying for a project manager role, right? It's, but if you are a junior designer with project management experience, that's going to go in your personal profile right there at the top so that there's no like confusion. Um, like I'm a recent graduate, but before I came to the US, I worked for 10 years in um, wherever. And I had the unique experience of running large scale development projects and doing the management and blah, blah, blah. So whatever it is that really you wanna convey should go right at the top in your personal profile. Um, I also wanted to show like some more design specific resumes that have been edited for which, kind of takes away from being able to see exactly what's on the page. But um, I liked this one because it was pretty simple and um, is both a resume and a portfolio. So like having a headshot here, super to the point with employment history, you've got your title, the name of the firm, and then the dates. I think it's really important to have the month and the year, not just years because it can sometimes raise a question in someone's mind of like, were you there for the whole time? Were you there for a week? Like what, what were you doing? And, and, and if there was gaps in your resume, no problem. That's something, again, you can have a conversation about in a, in a interview, um, but just not uh, coming across as already hiding something or not being uh, honest about what your experience is, is a little strange. Um, you can also show if you were at a firm for a long time, it, how your uh, position has changed. You can do that in multiple ways on LinkedIn. It's a little uh, specific in how, you know, like what the date was when you were promoted or whatever, but you could do that on your resume too, as maybe your first line, like, you know, promoted to project manager from job captain within one year of employment. That's a great accomplishment. And it's more, you know, speaking to your experience than just saying, project manager from X year to Y year, y year. it's showing that you've uh, already experienced personal growth in that opportunity. Um, and I also like here, you've got some nice personal details, um, accomplishments and skills. I, I think that uh, going back to sort of that template that we are looking at when it comes to quantifying your skills for software, um, it's, it can kind of be a catch 22, like when you have those fillable bubbles of showing like I'm five out of five for AutoCAD, but I'm only three out of five for Revit, right? It's like, then they're like, well, they're, they're not really good at Revit. So let's find somebody who's excellent. Um, sometimes I can work against you, but if you're 10 out of 10 for everything, please convey that. Um, in other cases, it might just be helpful to list all of the software that you are familiar with and you are comfortable working in. And um, if you took any classes or, you know, specific learning with that software, definitely mention it and just sort of give explanation of what your level of skill is, but don't over or under um, state it. Having your academic background or your, ex or your education experience is great. Being clear on what type of degree it was and your graduation date. References are nice, but I don't think super necessary to have on your resume it can be maybe something in your project list or something that you send at a later time. Unless of course, like your references are Tom Main at Morphosis and like, you know, these big names, but even then no one's going to like pick up the phone and call your references because you put it on your CV. I think it just speaks to like who would vouch for you. Um, 
And then I like, like I said, that this one just goes right into project portfolio. So it would have the project title on top, uh, type of project, and then listing that this person's responsibilities on this project. And this is extremely important. Um, as you all know, architecture pro architectural projects take a whole lot of collaborators and they're often quite large in scale or they're quite small in scale, but um, being really clear on uh, size of the team and what components of the project you were directly responsible for is important so that, again, that, that person reviewing can really create the tie-in in their mind of like, oh, how would you fit into the projects that we're working on right now? What are your strengths? Were you doing the construction documentation or were you doing the project management? Those are totally different. Or were you doing both? You want to really be clear on um, what it was that really was your wheelhouse. Um, and the rest of the, it's just like this. It's really only like that, what is that, five pages of project samples. Um, these are all one page for different projects. Um, and then that resume first page, six pages total. And I personally would, this would catch my attention more than a hundred page portfolio because then I have to like download it off of weed transfer and then I have to open it. And then I have to sort of in my mind, create the hierarchy of like, oh, when was the most recent project? And when, what was the most, you know, biggest accomplishment? I don't want to have to fill in the blanks. That's what you should be doing when you send your materials forward. Um, and then I've got a couple more uh, resume samples. Let's see. I wanted to bring those ones up because they're a little different from what we looked at before. Um, Um, let's see what we have here. This one's uh, again pretty nice because it's just really to the point. Um, you've got a little bit different, you know, setup, super, super, super minimalist. You've got the job experience here on the left, which is kind of condensed, um, but it's cool that I think that they have like a clear explanation of the, of the dates about what they're doing. You've got the objective right at the top, which is excellent. Um, here again, you've got this different way of portraying the skills, but even though this person is skilled at Rhino, the first thing that I see is like, oh, that's the lowest scoring you know, skill. Um, so not great if you're, if you're making yourself look the best, um, because I'm sure that this person is still quite skilled at that software. Otherwise they wouldn't have listed it. So just something to think about as you're putting that all together. Um, love that they have their awards, their project awards. Again, it would be great to just hyperlink that if there is any information available on AI eSpace website or um, Gold Nuggets website, um, just so that if they wanted to learn more, they could see what that project is all about. Um, I also really like having a little bit more about the other things, right? Because life outside of work does exist and likely you are involved in AWA plus D or uh, women in architecture or uh, initiatives at your firm or at your school. Um, so don't forget that that is still very much a part of what your professional experience is. Um, and it gives a sense again of like who you are because it might be that you sell exactly who you are and that's not what somebody's looking for. Better to know now at the beginning that you put yourself forward as exactly as you want to be perceived and it wasn't the right fit onto the next. Um, so I think giving that like background about who you are is, is important. Um, and then this one just went into like a project list, right? And I love project lists that are um, a little bit more like digestible, so to speak. I like that they're broken out into typologies, live, work, and play. I mean, live can be single family, can be multifamily residential. Work is obviously corporate workspace. It could be headquarters. It could be, you know, this is kind of interesting. It's like a little bit of retail and or like almost like cultural, right? and landscape, but it's all under work and then play. That's a really cool, um, unique 
typology to be working in, right? We all wish we could be doing play, play projects. Um, I think it's great to also, uh, again, hyperlink those projects if they exist online to give a little bit more of a description about what it was like. I, I've seen so many, you know, addresses or, you know, I worked on 777 Bluebird Lane. Of course, I kind of know that that's a beautiful neighborhood and that the projects are, you know, multi-million dollar homes. Um, but talking about, you know, what this project was like and what their involvement was says a lot more about the project than just its address on the on the map um so any way that you can give a little bit more information in your project list um is great because it makes it more digestible for a complete stranger and and i think it's important to note that um you know Bespoke Careers is unique in that we're ex-industry for the most part. And we've worked with, you know, AIA and, and Westside Urban Forum and then and many other actual uh, architecture firms. It's often that people in HR at, at all types of offices don't necessarily work in the, the specific focus of that office. You could be having your resume being read by someone in HR who does not have architecture experience. And so saying that you worked on a project from SD to CA could to somebody's mind mean San Diego to California. You know, I think that we oftentimes like take for granted the little lingo that we all speak in um, working in architecture and design. And so having that in mind about, you know, having the potential idea that the person reviewing your resume could have no idea what some of this means is um, a great lens to also view this through. And I like to pull up this one too, just because it's a little bit different. Um, it's a resume from the UK. So obviously some of the abbreviations are gonna be a little different from what we're used to, but I like that here you have just some beautiful project images and we can't all have beautiful project images, like, especially when you're just starting out, but I'm sure you've worked on some pretty cool academic projects and you've created some beautiful renders um, and some interesting models. And this is a great space to really um, give a teaser about what that, what that looks like. Um, I think architects and designers are very, very visual. And so just making it a little bit more dynamic is important. This one's, uh, again, a little uh, reverse in terms of having the employment at the bottom and education and awards first, but it can be a little different in, in Europe about how, you know, the, the job seeking process and the hiring process. Um, oftentimes there's like, a clear explanation of citizenship or work authorization that's right at the top of the page, which is maybe different from what we do in the States. Um, language skills, being able to speak English and Welsh. Um, uh, that's often something that I don't see on designers' resumes, even though I'd say that designers often are more multilingual than, than other, um, other professions. Um, so I think being able to remember all of who you are and bring it to the table with your CV is great. Um, this is kind of a combined education or work experience overview with project lists. Like you can see here, you've got some of the details about the projects, budgets, what was done, alterations and refurbishment versus, you know, installation of a freestanding structure. I hope you all can see this. Is this the tiniest screen? Okay, we're good. Um, I think that that's nice, you know, just talking again, if you could hyperlink that better, but uh, good to just give a little more context. So that is kind of the CV example I was thinking to give you. Um, I'll talk just super, super briefly about, um, how are we on time? Your portfolio, um, because Again, AWA plus D is going to have an amazing couple of events coming up. Um, I think on my end, I want to just say that, you know, a portfolio is a great space to show your range and throw, show your style. Um, but you also want to make sure that it's, it's formatted correctly. It's great if it, it pairs nicely with your CV. It's not necessarily the most important thing. Um, but I think uh, just being able to keep it simple is better than going totally over the top. Um, I like this little clip here. 
on the side that shows, you know, what was your role in the project, include important details. This one has the client, the architect, status, team, contractor, contract value. You might not have all of those details, um, but having a clear, we can maybe zoom in, having a clear um, overview of exactly what was going on, if it won any awards, you know, stand out, emphasize any awards, et cetera. Um, and to also keep it updated. So oh, now it's like, you wanna edit this page? Um, no, I do not. <laughs> Let's jump to the next one. Um, I think that, that uh, again, this is a teaser. You don't wanna have everything in the kitchen sink. Um, but you do want to show your biggest accomplishments and it might be something tiny, a piece of furniture that you crafted yourself, you know, or a really cool model that you put for, put together for your class, or it might be a massive, you know, seven year project that you worked on, um, having a little bit of both. And again, using the resources like Canva or InDesign to create pages that are easily switchable. Um, so not having a table of contents with like a page number on every page better to just have pages that you can drag and drop and reorder so that you can have a full, full portfolio that exists somewhere and then selectively pull from that to send off a hospitality application or something like that. Um, and yeah, I already touched on that. Quickly, um, your cover lever, bleh, your cover letter, your cover email, I would say do it or don't, make it count. Um, I think that there's a tendency to really go super generic on your cover letter, like, hey guys, I'm Natalie, I do this, that, and the other. Just say what's not already been said in your CV and portfolio. This is a letter directly to a potential future employer. This is an opportunity that you have to address them directly take advantage, um, take two seconds to properly address who it is that you're writing an email to. I personally don't enjoy to whom it may concern because then I gotta be concerned about who the right person is. When I receive a cover letter addressed to me at Bespoke Careers, you have my attention, of course. you know. And that's not hard to do. It's not hard to LinkedIn or Google search for who the hiring manager at Grimshaw is, you know, it's, it's out there. The information is live. Um, you want to express why you're applying to this specific company. What about their work interests you? Did you focus on something similar in school or in practice? Um, and I'd say generally, the better you get at talking about your work, the easier it is to show someone your value. So you could even practice with a friend and they say, why are you applying to this job? well, you know, like I heard that they work on modular projects and I visited this factory and I'm super interested in the technology and like being able to just get excited again and create that connection uh, even through the screen. So tailoring your, res tailoring your cover letter is great. Emphasizing your unique qualifications and summarizing um, anything that's super specific, like your work experience, you know, I have eight years of post-grad experience working in greater Los Angeles, uh, your availability, I'm available full time, I can start immediately or in two weeks or in, you know, early March. Um, and uh, your work authorization, I do think is, is great to include on your cover letter if, if it's something that you feel comfortable about, just so that it can be clearly communicated to the hiring person. Um, and then I'll just go touch quickly on LinkedIn. Um, there is another event that we did last year that really goes into the nitty gritty of LinkedIn. Um, but I do believe that LinkedIn is your business card on the internet and just as important as it is to put forward a couple of documents that portray who you are on paper or digital paper to a potential job, you also want to make sure that that is exactly more or less what's on your LinkedIn in terms of the dates, in terms of your employers, in terms of the people that you're connected with, like use that platform to your advantage. It's kind of unique in that sense that it's our uh, professional so work, social network. Um, and there's lots of ways that you can really optimize your portfolio, your, your LinkedIn in, you know, very quick and easy ways. The number one is to feed the algorithm and to give it as much information as it's constantly prompting you to give it. It'll say like, Hey, Natalie, you didn't fill out this line. Like, you know, two more pieces of information, you'll hit all-star all status. Um, 
All-star status is when you give LinkedIn all the information it wants, the headline, your schools, volunteer experience, past jobs. I think it needs like at least three um, listing skills, connecting with people. When you have an all-star profile, you are 40 times more likely to receive offers for jobs. Like 40 times, that's the most, it's a lot. It's worth it to put a little bit of effort if you're gonna do your CV to also update your LinkedIn. Um, because the good news is only 51% of LinkedIn users have fully completed profiles. So that means that like, there's already half of the people not using it. So stand out from the rest, you know, really convey who it is that you are on, uh, on LinkedIn and use your network to your advantage. There's so many cool ways to search it and to see what's going on and follow firms you're interested in and look at job postings and sort of see what it is that your friends at school are doing. And, and you could reach out to them like, Hey, I saw you got this internship how did you get it? Or do you have a contact that I can reach out to? Would you feel comfortable, you know, asking if there's another um, like round of internships that are going to happen next year? Use that to, might as well just ask. Obviously don't be all weird and like <laughs> sending spam messages, but it's a great, great platform that is rarely taken advantage of. Um, I have a couple of tips on just virtual interviews, but I feel like we're pretty well versed in um, meeting online these days. Obviously research is a huge component of being prepared for your first virtual interview, really knowing the firm and what type of projects they work on and who the people are that you'll be meeting with, knowing your CV in and out so that you can really uh, respond to questions posed specifically to you testing your system, making sure that you've got good lighting, you've got a good setup as much as you can, unlike me right now today, uh, look into your camera. One of the things we do is kind of like put a post-it note right behind, um, you know, your, the top of your laptop or the top of your desktop and just say, look up because that's the only way that we can really look like we're looking and paying attention to the people who we're interviewing with. And it feels uncomfortable at first and you want to kind of like stare at yourself in the little corner of the screen. Um, but it's a really nice way to create a sense of connection, even though we're all digital for the most part. Um, so yeah, choose your setting at the interview, obviously turn up on time and do that test ahead of time. So you really know that you're able to screen share and, and have your CV and portfolio pulled up digitally. So you can do that. Um, address people by name as much as you can, since we've got the usual labeled um, titles here on the, the video screens. Be clear, there's oftentimes a delay and that can really kick in when you start to get into the question and answer portion of things. So just taking an extra second, calming yourself down and, and giving enough time to everybody to participate um, and waiting until the interviewer is done asking a question before you respond. So better to have a couple seconds of silence and to like constantly be eating each other's words. Um, and then of course, I'm a strong believer in a nice thank you uh, letter after you've had the opportunity to interview, showing that you have that follow through. It's just, it's so small and it, all it has to be is a thanking somebody for their time. It's just a great way to, to really, you know, close the circle, so to speak. Um, and then this is a great little slide here talking about the upcoming events with AWA plus D. You've got some nice cocktails and conversations there. Both the first two events are in January as well as February. So cocktails and conversations and then a self-employed business owners group morning coffee. And then uh, probably for most of you, what's really fabulous is there's going to be two events in February. One's going to be portfolio best practices, which I'm sure is going to be so great. And then an <laughs> actual portfolio review. So um, amazing. The more feedback that you can get, the better. I know it can sometimes be a little overwhelming to put yourself out there. And especially if you feel like maybe you don't have all the experience that you wish that you had. Um, we're, all, we're all on that path. And I'm sure all levels of experience, we remember what it's like to be a recent graduate or to be in your position. So um, just coming across with who it is that you are and, and putting your best, you know, foot out there is, is what it's all about. So 
that's kind of what I had to say. Are there any burning questions that anybody has or anything you wanted me to jump back into? 